from touchstone classics like Supergirl and Elektra to unforgettable films like Catwoman and Tank Girl. It's safe to say that Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel had their work cut out for them to top those gems. Sarcasm aside, let's see which one's better here on Movie Feuds. Gal Gadot is the real deal. Brains, beauty, legs that run for days, a voice that only Zeus could produce, she is Wonder Woman. Chris pines for her as Steve Trevor, a self-described above average man. Princess Diana is not the only Amazonian warrior in this picture to steal some scenery. Connie Nielsen plays her mother MILF, Hippolyta. Antiope, the badass warrior instructor, is played by Robin. If it's wrong to love a fictional comic book character, then I don't want to be right. It was a long walk to get there. Professor Lupin is once again using transfiguration, but this time he keeps that mustache intact. On the Marvel side of things, we have Brie, I hate white men Larson. I'm joking, the race doesn't matter, she just hates all men. Joking again. It's good to laugh at things. Larson has no problem handling the role because there is virtually no role to handle. I look forward to her getting better material down the road. Samuel L. Jackson is a sight to behold as the two-eyed Nick, bringing that fury in a buddy cop role. It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. It turns out Goose the Cat is no star pupil when it botches Nick's eye exam. I imagine Quicksilver down in hell somewhere saying, I bet you didn't see that coming. Why hell, you ask? White male. Joking again. Ben Mendelsohn cracks wise as an alien while Annette Benning helps ruin a Nirvana song. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. Remember how lame and somewhat annoying Steve Trevor's band of brothers were? A sniper who can't snipe. A piper who can't pipe. I made the second one up, but I really hated that sniper. At least I remember him though. CM has a whole squad of forgettables. Having the audacity to walk in slow motion towards the camera like I'm supposed to care. You didn't earn that slow-mo walk yet. You didn't earn it! It's not perfect. We have pillaged, we have plundered, we've left the toilet seat up after being repeatedly asked to put it down. Zeus saw the writing on the sky and decided to hide a secret paradise from man's douchey grasp. A place of love and kindness, where the land is as fruitful as the women that inhabit it. They're deadly in the sheets and killers in the streets. Train warriors who house a secret weapon. A young woman who just fell head over mountain for an American spy that crash landed in the waters below. Together they'll take on the Germans, the god of war, and still find time to have a fun little pretty woman montage. Look how silly she looks in those dresses. I'm joking, she still looks beautiful! After 20 minutes of nothing, Carol Danvers' crash lands into a blockbuster and right into our hearts. She's on a mission to hunt down a shape-shifting alien race and scroll fuck them into oblivion. Along the way, she uncovers more than she bargained for. Turns out, at one point, she was a human kid, a human teen, and a human adult, who more often than not is found on the floor getting back up again. That's why we do fall, though so we can get back up. Alfred would be proud. She finally discovers that a literal blast from the past gave her superpowers. The Skrulls ain't the only thing that can change appearance, as the final plot point takes shape as well. Jude Law wasn't just a mercenary Kree. Nah, he was a mercenary creep. The whole thing caps off with Carol crushing ships, breaking hearts, and flying off to her next movie, avoiding the next 30 years of MCU advancements in other movies. I ask my community for their input, and they don't sugarcoat things. In the Captain Marvel camp, we have HTB, which sounds like some sort of a sexual disease. How many Ben Mendelsohns are in Wonder Woman? Answer, none. Point, Captain Marvel. Wonder Woman is amazing, but the third act sucked. Captain Marvel is amazing from beginning to end. Well said, very profound. On the Wonder Woman side of things, Big Texas says, a beautiful, charming woman versus a frumpy, emotionless turd. I just can't decide. Gershon says this isn't even a fair fight. One of these was allowed to be its own standalone movie and delve into its main character, whereas Captain Marvel is just a filler episode before the big finale, featuring a new character just in time to save the day. One is celebrating an icon, while the other is just lazy writing. You're not wrong, let's head to production. This is, of course, subjective, but I'm going to injective my opinion into this conversation. Some prefer Wonder Woman because of the great sets, costume designs, and rich history. The excellent lighting and frantic action might wet their whistle, too. The strong, bombastic music to the backdrop of war-torn Europe certainly goes a long way. Inspirational messages, such as never backing down against all odds and having faith in one another, also have their place somewhere in moviegoer eyes. Others, however, enjoy the flat, washed-out palettes that Captain Marvel offers. Stale? 
almost boring action at times, pairs nicely with long, drawn-out exposition. The schlocky soundtrack that ranges from a generic theme song to, hey, remember the 90s? May just be what the Doctor Strange ordered, tossing the same joke beats we've heard a million times now, while undercutting serious moments from the past, and then Marvel at the results. I typically enjoy Marvel movies, but I fear we're at the point now where the goose is a bit cooked. The choice should be clear for me if you were listening at all. Wonder Woman is the easy winner here. Let's see what the audience had to say though in the polls. At just shy of a thousand votes via the community tab on YouTube, Captain Marvel ends with 22%. Making Wonder Woman the easy winner at 78%. That seems fair, all is right in the world. Thanks for watching and until next time, this is more than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds.